experienced it and you know it we have become rich because that means we can cope with any situation of life we can deal with any crisis we can handle any rejection we can deal with the greatest pain of life because we know where to find the resource that handles every one of them and that is in the stillness in the quietness when we know that the lord is sovereign above everything in our lives let us become aware are we actually accessing this resource in our life are we actually dealing with life through this resource because if we are not often we fall to the human levels we get caught up in the things of this world so easily our minds get messed up fears rule us resentment anger reactions and the greatest thing is we are blind to the existence and the comfort and the love of our god so because he is calling us 40 days into that quiet place to f- to find this resource and make it the resource of our life shall we say thank you lord hallelujah 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 praise you father hallelujah 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 let's sing it with a lot of meaning in the secret of your presence i know that i am restored i can be made new i can find perfect peace i can find the answer to every need of our life we don't live by fear anymore because we know a great resource is available that will take us through will open our eyes will heal our blindness and suddenly the presence of god becomes real in every situation of our life thank you lord hallelujah 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 glory to your name worship you father hallelujah
So we are entering the third week of Lent. Yesterday was the Sunday and now we are going through the third week of Lent. So today's theme is a very interesting theme. Why is that? It's about God and little people. The great God and little people and that's a beautiful theme we have defined uh, God and little people not God and big people because big people believe they own God as well but here you see God and little people the insight of the Gospels so the first reading is from the second book of Kings, 2 Kings 5, 1. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. So, uh, we are first introduced to a great man. Who is that? He's the commander. Naaman the commander. He was a great man. You can repeat that. In the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant, valiant soldier but he had leprosy. So he was a great man. He also had leprosy. So it's interesting, isn't it? Why is that? Every strong person also has a weakness. However strong they think they are. It's a balancing act of nature. Strong in one area, pretty weak in another. So, strength and weakness work together. But the only problem is that many strong people are blind to their weakness. They make sure that they don't see it and they make sure that other people won't remind it to them. <laughs> so we know how to make other people shut up. <laughs> if you are strong enough, you can make them all shut up. But the weakness won't go away. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Naaman, what's the weakness he had? He had leprosy. What happened? Verse 2. Now, bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel. And she served Naaman's wife. Now he is a slave. One great man and one little person. See the two people, the characters in in the first reading you have the great man and a little person. See what happens, verse 3. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet 
who is in samaria he would cure him of his leprosy so he was talking about elisha elisha is from israel not from judea and he lived there and this girl brought the good news so we saw last week how joseph was taken into captivity and carried the providence of god into egypt now we see how how this girl is captured in a raid and carries the good news of god into the house of this so, uh, command so good things can happen out of bad ones praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and how 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 can you that happen if only we have eyes to see we have to recognize that that out of the most terrible situations god can bring something beautiful and good and just because we failed does not mean that god has failed god is actually working through that for the blessing see how blind we are isn't it we think at the you know at the when something goes wrong you know uh, this woman taken captive by 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 these people is a tragedy but we think is the end of the world what is god doing anyway we ask why didn't he help anyway but through that also god is working praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord it's a beautiful reading you know it's so rich of this whole thing you know 54 naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from israel had said so he went to the king and said you know this girl has said there is a man who can heal me in israel you know okay let's see fine by all means go the king of aram replied i will send a letter to the king of israel so naaman left taking with him 10 talents of silver 6000 shekels of gold and 10 sets of clothing now he brought presents and now he's ready to go and give the king in order that the king will now uh, get this prophet to heal him was six the letter that he took to the king of israel read with this letter i am sending my servant naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy <laughs> now now this is another thing of human nature the king of aram didn't want to deal with elisha the prophet why because it was beneath him he only wanted to talk king to king <laughs> and we can easily do that isn't it these people are below our status so what happens you are we are dealing with our own kind only and in the end that itself is a great blindness because we only see what our own kind see praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and it's a it's a terrible thing you know it can it can spread to ethnic races tamil see only as tamil see singali see only as singali see <laughs> why is that then conflict comes but we can't see anything else all because we associate or we hook up or link up with people who are likewise praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so the letter was sent he said please heal my 
servant. He didn't tell about the prophet or anybody else. He said, you, that's your job because we are king to king protocol. <laughs> it can happen in religion as well, you know. Where uh, small people are forgotten because big people only associate and work with big people. <laughs> so, so God, where is he? That's the interesting thing. Where is he working? Look at the next verse. No next verse. Can't find it. Right. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me <laughs> to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. <laughs> now, the king of Israel was also blind. Why, why was he blind? He was full of himself. Therefore, he didn't think for a moment that there may be somebody else who could actually do this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So he thought, this man wants me to do this. And then he thought, you know, he was smart because he was, the king is a politician. So he did an analysis and he asked the question, why is he doing this? Then he comes to his own answer. What is his answer? This guy is trying to pick a fight with me. Isn't it amazing how misunderstandings come out of ego and ignorance? He asked a simple request. <laughs> but because he was full of himself, because he had a bad experience with the king before, because they raided each other, they never trusted each other. Immediately, the distrust became number one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We may not be the king of Israel and the king of Aram, but we are the king of our house and we have the same problems. We are the king of our workplace and we have the same issues. What is that issue? Our past experiences dictate how we interpret present situations. And we don't realize it can be a blindness, isn't it? So we start, he of course, she of course. What do you mean by he of course and she of course? Already the historical background is into my interpretation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that's what you call a colored paradigm. And we people don't realize that we carry paradigms. You know, a paradigm is we think it's real, but it's only a map we have made in our minds. And this king couldn't see beyond this paradigm because there was no one to tell him otherwise. And he and he Assume these things easily. But what happened? Verse 8. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him a message. You know, this tearing of robes is not familiar to us, but it's familiar to them. That's a ritual way of saying, I am distressed. You know, so you tear your robes. You don't tear somebody else's robes. You tear, you tear your own robes. It's a sign of being distressed, sign of repentance, and the sign of distress. And that's why Joel said that the start of on Ash Wednesday, don't tear your garments, but tear the heart, because it can be ritual. It can be outside, but really not happening inside 
Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't that amazing? You know, what's the prophet? He had a direct connection with God. Because he had a direct connection with God, he was not really interested in what the king thought. <laughs> or how the king behaved. <laughs> or what kind of position he got. He was free of that. That's why prophets suffered. Because they were in connection with God and they said and did things that were coming from that connection. In the quiet, in the stillness, uh, they knew the voice of God. So on one hand it's a blessing, on the other it's a curse. Because the chance of living a trouble-free life <laughs> is very little. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because you have this thing coming in and then you have to respond to that call and when you respond, invariably it causes a lot of issues. Somebody said, don't you remember that there is a prophet in Israel? There is a man connected to God. Verse 9. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Now this man had brought ten, ten suits of clothes, thousands of shekels. He took the whole lot and went to the house of Elisha. He expected Elisha to jump to attention and jump for joy. Because Naaman, the great commander, had come to the house of Elisha. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And once again you see, the prophet was a little man. He didn't have any riches. He didn't have any resources. But he lived in this house quietly. What happened? Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, First thing he didn't come out. <laughs> That's a big insult in Middle Eastern uh, ethics. <laughs> you know, you, you, you send a messenger without coming out. He didn't care. Why didn't he care? Because he was not in diplomacy or politics. He was not building his own case. He was not having political ambitions. He had a connection with God and he was doing what God wanted him to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, you can see the difference. You know. What happened? Go. Don't go yet. <laughs> go. <laughs> Wash yourselves seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored. And you will be cleansed. <laughs> he sent him the messenger. that you go and wash seven times and you'll be okay. You'll be fine. You know? What happened? Verse 11. But Naaman went away angry. And said. He got angry. Naaman became angry. I thought he would surely come out to me. And stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God. Wave his hand over the spot <laughs> and cure me of my leprosy. Now Naaman also had a big ego. <laughs> he thought he must be treated right. How is that? Go through the difficult process of praying and going through the efforts, then of course, this man has really respected me. So, doctor was telling me once, 
you know, patients come, unless you give them medicine, they are not satisfied. So <laughs> they find there is nothing wrong, but they have to give medicine. And one kind won't do in Sri Lanka, you have to give three kinds. Have you noticed all doctors give three kinds of medicines? Then only you feel the doctor has really treated me. Otherwise, Vedak ne, Behetad Dunnit ne. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you can see, Naman also wanted, the, you know, why don't, you know, why didn't he, why didn't he show me enough respect, you know, he could have come out, he could have dealt with this in a better way, you know. Doesn't he know how important I am? Look at the next verse. Are not Abana and Fafa, you know, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? When you get angry, your ego really brings out the facts. You know, and then of course you begin to see more and more. He said, what, what, what is this Jordan? And if you see the Jordan only, you'll understand. Why is that? You can jump across the Jordan. <laughs> if you run hard, you can jump across the Jordan. It's a small thing. <laughs> so, so at least now those days we don't know, but at least now you can jump across the Jordan. Jordan. Such, so small is the thing. Couldn't I wash in them? And be cleansed. So he turned and went off in a rage. So you can see how uh, when we think we are big, we become insulted by what other people do, easily offended. And when we become offended, we become angry. And then we become even more blind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at the next verse. Now we are introduced to another little person. Isn't it beautiful? Started with the servant slave girl. Now here is another one. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, Wash and be cleansed out of the mouths of babes. You know, you will hear the wisdom. You know, he said, if he had told you to go through a big ritual, you'd have gladly gone because you'd have thought that's going to heal you. But then he told you only to do a simple thing. So it's a lesson for all of us. What's that? God may be speaking to us through little people. And then what? We are not open. And when we are not open, we can lose the voice of God in our lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I remember when my two children were small, you know. Uh, I was waiting for a vehicle. It was, you know, uh, there was a little time. You know, my eldest son, Jeevaka, he was very fat then. So I caught the fellow and I tickled him, you know. And when I tickled him, he couldn't escape me. So he pushed me with his leg. And his, on his leg was the slipper, you know. And my white shirt, <laughs> the slipper mark. The moment I saw it, I hammered him on. <laughs> because that's, you know, because I, my, I had to change my shirt, you know. So in the evening, we had evening prayers. You know, Dutika, six years old, you know. And then he says, today Tati did something wrong, he said. <laughs> and then he says, he tickled Aya, and when Aya pushed him with the slipper, he hit him. <laughs> now I could have used my authority card. What's my authority card? You shut up, you small fellow. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> because, and then he would have shut up. But what happens? People with the children grow up thinking, this guy never lessons or you can deal with the truth you know yes I lost my temper please forgive me and then at least your children know 
even if he gets mad once in a way, when he's sane, we can explain it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is better than someone who denies that they never get angry. I never do the wrong thing. Then you become blind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And here, out of the mouth of the servant, God is free. So today is a good day to start listening. Listening to what? God speaking to us through little things and little people. From those who don't have a credibility in the eyes of the world. They don't have much credibility. Why is that? Because uh, they don't have the, the resources or the background necessary to talk to someone like me. <laughs> Isn't it? How important I am. And you don't, you don't talk to me. You know. But you start listening because God may be speaking. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at the gospel. It's beautiful. You know How the gospel confirms this whole thing, you know. Luke 4.24, we'll do it quick. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Verse 25, I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shot sat for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land verse 26 yet Elijah was not sent to any one of them but to a widow in Sarafat in the region of Sidon Jesus is quoting that why is that? because it was only that widow who opened her house to the prophet Elijah. All the others were not interested. And Elijah asked a pretty selfish thing from her. And she said, she said I have only this amount of flour in my, my hand and I have only this amount of oil. She said, bake me a, <laughs> bake me a cake with that. And from that day till the rains came, her oil and flour did not run out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What does it mean? If you obey God, you come under His protection and His providence. If you walk on your own, you can walk with your ego and be lost by yourself. And that's what he was telling the chosen people. Just because you are a people of, of the Jews of Israel, don't assume that everything is okay between you and God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 27. And there were many in Israel with leprosy. In the time of Elisha the prophet, Yet not one of them was cleansed. Only Naaman the Syrian. <laughs> and you see, he, he quotes from Naaman the Syrian. Why is that? Because Naaman the Syrian sought him. There were people, but they didn't think of coming to the prophet Elisha. Can you see, again you see, the little people had a better chance of Receiving the outcast, the outsider, than the people who thought they possessed it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What happened? What's the result? Verse 28. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. Verse 29. They got up and drove him out of the town. And took him to the brow of a hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. <laughs> what did they want to do? They want to silence him. So what did they do? They took him to the top, you know, near Nazareth to get that hill, you know. 
and you took, took him there and they wanted to throw him down. Like, they, why were they furious? Because he was challenging their comfortable assumptions. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 30. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. So if the time is not right, if God is in control, God will see that nothing will happen. We are comfortable with that. But also remember that he allowed Jesus to go to the cross. When the time is right, he will also allow that. He, he protected St. Paul when he was left for dead. So lowered him from the top of the top of the beer of the city wall, but when the time was right, he was also taken and beheaded. So, so suffering for the gospel is also an essential part of this journey, because our home is actually not here. We are on our way. We are on a pilgrimage. And on this pilgrimage we have jobs to do and God is taking us along and when the time is right, He will call us to Himself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if we have to suffer, if we have to go through that pain, we have the assurance of from last week I told you how the living water inside us will give us peace. Will give us the the freedom to handle it with internal strength. And those who don't know that, those who don't know that, think that everything must be okay on the surface. They don't know anything else. Not so. If you really walk with God, God will protect you. God will look after you. But he also has a dual purpose. He has a mission for you on the, in the world. And when you do that mission, you'll go through, you'll go through pain. But then the comfort will come from inside. The living water. It will flow in our hearts, bless other people, and also take us into the heart of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, we are not afraid because we learn not to rely on ourselves. You understand that? Because always what really bothered me was inside my heart I felt, you know, I don't have the courage to be strong under stress, under, under attack, under pain. The tendency is to give in, to give up because that's the weakness of human nature. But then the Lord has been teaching over the years. That's when you learn to rely on me. Because a strength and a courage and a presence that is not yours will flow through your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So our comfort is not in ourselves, but in Him. He will give us the resource we need. That's why we look at the cross. At the cross, we will get the resource we need. And then, we'll also have the reward of the resurrection. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, we can be undisturbed in our hearts. Why are we undisturbed? The strength of someone greater is at work. And it's not just strength. It's also a person. Jesus as a person is living inside us. The Holy Spirit as a person is living inside us. And both of them will make us deal with those issues with His strength. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when Christians live that way, I am sure things will change in the world. Shall we stand and be in His presence? We we'll sing the second verse of that. In the chaos, in confusion, I know 
you are suffering still. Isn't that beautiful? Because once you come to that, you have internal freedom and peace. In the moment of my weakness, you give me grace to do your will. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Why is that? Because in the quiet, in the stillness, I have learned to have the connection with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand and we say, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Teach us, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 desert which was generating such heat that it was dehydrating the people was one tap away from being the source of water that gave them life and that's exactly what God is doing in our lives the greatest crisis the biggest issues the saddest moments the deepest loneliness one little step away from realizing I have none but Jesus but because Jesus is there all the resources I need are actually available we don't want to go there we hold on to the little things that shrub this shrub, this tree, that other tree. We want to break our fall. We want to stop somehow. We want to solve our problem. Compromise, give up, worship someone, work things out, 
do something so that this thing will stop but the lord says i'm taking you to that place where there is none but jesus and that's what happened to jesus on the cross none but god none none but god and that is when he says i will still be there for you how do we find this where do we find this in the stillness in the quiet when we sit in his presence this truth will come through intuition will come through the spirit of god into our spirit and suddenly into our desolation into our sadness into our struggle into our hopelessness will come the awareness jesus himself is taking us there and because god has given us that gift of prayer to really find this treasure shall we say thank you lord hallelujah 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 glory to you hallelujah 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 hallelujah
make us little people that realize that we have no one else but you. And because of that, we hear your voice. Lord, we realize the king of Israel, he didn't know, he didn't think that the prophet lived there. The great commander, Naaman, his ego prevented him from receiving that healing. But that little person who accompanied him, who was more in connection with the realities of heaven, led him there. Lord Jesus, we pray, lead us out of our own blindness into the beauty of depending only on you. So that as we come to stillness, as we come to the inner journey, we find you. And Lord, we know how difficult it is to say yes to your will. But we realize now, it's not our strength, it's yours. As we remain in that quietness, your presence becoming real inside our lives, you living in us, your presence in our hearts, saying yes becomes easier and easier as we stop relying on ourselves or building up our own image and relying on you and resting in you in our own brokenness. Lord, you will do the mighty things that great people cannot do because it is your power working through us. Help us, Lord, into that journey by the Holy Spirit moving in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand once again? And we say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your glory. Lead us deeper and deeper. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Remember, don't allow the word.